Welcome to Point of View. This is Pastor Josh Barnes, and this is the show where we are unashamed to look at political issues from a biblical point of view. We do that because Jesus died on the cross and rose from the dead, and that's really all the proof that we need, but there's tons more proof that the Bible is true. But since Jesus said that he was God, and that he died on the cross and rose from the dead, that means that he is God, and that when he said that the Bible is true, he wasn't lying. He was actually saying the Bible is true. And it really is. And if the Bible is true, then we can't disagree with the Bible and be right about political issues. So, or any other issue, not just political issues. And so that's the emphasis that we're, we have here at this show. Somebody asked me last week, uh, actually commented on, on the show, asked if it's a political show or a religious show. And I answered, yes, because we are both. And, uh, so I, I don't see a, a, a conflict between those two. And we're going to take that same principle and apply it to the brand new dictator Joe Biden's mandate on the mask. Now, I'm going to start with the dishonest aspect of this. Now, we've come to a place in our country where dishonesty is almost expected by, from, our, uh, from our leaders. It's, it's just expected that they're going to say one thing, do another. You know, what's the big deal? Well, I think it is a big deal. Let me, let me show you what was being said by the left a year ago. Here's Fauci, and uh, this, was, this was last year, talking about mandate, mandating vaccines. So I'm a physician. I see patients in my hospital right literally out the window here across the hall at the NIH Clinical Center. During the flu season, the administration of the hospital mandates that I have to get a flu vaccine. Otherwise, I won't be able to see patients the way I usually do. That has not happened ever, to my knowledge, at a national level or even at a state level. So I can see individual institutions mandating a vaccine. I don't see it on a national level, merely because of all the situations you have upon encroaching upon a person's freedom to make their own choice of their own health. So there's never going to be this um, vaccine mandate. It's just, it's just silly to even think that it would never happen on a national level. Here is Joe Biden last year saying the same thing. No, I don't think it should be mandatory. I wouldn't demand it to be mandatory, but I would do everything in my power. Just like I don't think masks have to be made mandatory nationwide. No, I don't think it should be mandatory. I, I'm going to do everything in my power. I don't think masks should be mandatory nationwide. This is when he was trying to get elected as president. Uh, now he failed at that and still became president. And, <laughs> oh boy, it was going to be taken off of YouTube. Great. I shouldn't have said that. Um, no, but now he's the president and a different tune is being sung. Here is just even recently. This is since he became president. And the same question was asked of, of uh, in the White House press bre briefing. And here is the answer that was given. She's hit a brick wall with trying to convince people to get vaccinated. Mm -hmm. Is that a sign that perhaps the federal government should step in and issue mandates? And if not, are you putting the needs of unvaccinated people ahead of the needs of vaccinated people? Well, I think the question here, one, that's not the role of the federal government. Um, that is the role that institutions, private sector entities, uh, and others may take. That certainly is appropriate. Also, local communities uh, are going to take uh, steps they need to take uh, in order to protect people in their community. Yeah. Yeah, so she's actually right about that. It's not the role of the federal government to impose vaccines on its population or to force even mask wearing on its population. Furthermore, the masks and vaccines clearly don't work. I, I literally had an interaction with someone this week and um, I, I met them. They asked me to wear a mask in their presence. Now, out of respect for people, I do that if they ask me to. So I put on a mask for them. They said, they explained to me that they were very worried and, and concerned about all the people who weren't wearing masks because they said they always wear masks 
and they have the vaccine and have the booster and they still got COVID-19. And they said it's the fault of all the people who aren't wearing masks and aren't vaccinated. It's silly. You're telling me that you are going to wear a mask, you're going to get vaccinated, and you can still get COVID, and it's my fault that you got COVID when you're vaccinated and you've got a mask? It tells me that wearing a mask and getting vaccinated doesn't do anything. Nothing. Now, with that in mind, here is Joe Biden's latest dictatorial decree. Uh, Joe Biden, um, the Fuhrer of the United States, has decreed... Uh, as follows. This is a pandemic of the unvaccinated. And it's caused by the fact that despite America having unprecedented and successful vaccination program, despite the fact that for almost five months, free vaccines have been available in 80,000 different locations, we still have nearly 80 million Americans who have failed to get the shot. And to make matters worse, there are elected officials actively working to undermine the fight against COVID-19. Instead of encouraging people to get vaccinated and mask up, they're ordering mobile morgues for the unvaccinated dying from COVID in their communities. This is totally unacceptable. My job as president is to protect all Americans. So tonight, I'm announcing that the Department of Labor is developing an emergency rule to require all employers with 100 or more employees that together employ over 80 million workers to ensure their workforces are fully vaccinated or show a negative test at least once a week. Some of the biggest companies are already requiring this. United Airlines, Disney, Tyson's Food, and even Fox News. Already, I've announced, we'll be requiring vaccinations at all nursing home workers who treat patients on Medicare and Medicaid because I have that federal authority. Tonight, I'm using that same authority to expand that to cover those who work in hospitals, home health care facilities, or other medical facilities. A total of 17 million health care workers. Next, I will sign an executive order that will now require all executive branch federal employees to be vaccinated, all. And I've signed another executive order that will require federal contractors to do the same. If you want to work with the federal government and do business with us, get vaccinated. If you want to do business with the federal government, vaccinate your workforce. And tonight, I'm removing one of the last remaining obstacles that make it difficult for you to get vaccinated. The Department of Labor will require employers with 100 or more workers to give those workers paid time off to get vaccinated. No one should lose pay in order to get vaccinated or take a loved one to get vaccinated. I'm not sure if we're supposed to say um, uh, Heil, Heil Biden after that or, or what exactly um, is the appropriate new terminology for our uh, for our, our uh, new overlord. Um, but I'm sure that we'll be given a list of appropriate uh, um, things to say that, that uh, the media, like point of view, is allowed to say about our, our, uh, our great leader, who is um, the great and benevolent, um, mighty Biden. <clears throat> with, with that, I bring on my brother, Justin Barnes who has an ever-changing background. Justin, how did your new move go? I know you just moved into a new studio, and that's really what, what it is. You moved into a studio. You didn't move into a new house that has a place for you to record. You got a new studio. So <clears throat> this is what where it becomes really awkward when we don't communicate appropriately before the show because – I'm just back at my original studio where I started point of view, just have it rearranged and sort of fancied up a little bit. Um, so yeah, nothing new on that front, really. I see. I see. So um, with that in mind, Justin, you're going backwards in time. <laughs> 
Now, the last time you were at, at that studio, we had, um, let's see, what was it? Uh, this was right about the time that President Biden became President Biden. I think it was about six months ago, something like that. Um, and he, we, we just played the videos. He said, no way, no how, it wouldn't be right. It wouldn't be the job of the, of the federal government to impose a mandate for masks or for vaccines on people. And remember that when, when the vaccine was first coming out, he was saying that it's dangerous and all this stuff because it was coming from Trump. Now we have, not surprisingly, not surprisingly at all, but we do have a 180 degree reversal where now it is, it seems that he is just the, just the opposite. Now we're going to mandate um, vaccines. What are your preliminary thoughts? And then we'll dive into each part of this uh, because it's actually a multi-parted, <laughs> if that's a word, a multi-layered decree that came from our king. And uh, we're going to break it down. Yeah, so <clears throat> a couple things initially. Um, first of all, this is the epitome of wanting to have your cake and eat it too. And I said this, I say this all the time with Biden. I mean, with the, with, you remember the answer for Afghanistan. It was, hey, so um, buck stops with you, right? Who You're you're the one that's responsible for all this. And he said, yes, uh, ultimately I'm, I'm, I'm responsible for, for everything that happens, but I'm not responsible for any of this. You want, you want to have your cake and eat it too. And if you listen to the speech, same exact thing. What do I mean? Listen to what he says. I don't, I don't know if we have the clips queued up or not, but in this speech, yeah, we're going to, we're going to play the whole thing. Just, just so, just so everyone knows, we're going to play through the whole thing and, and break it up piece by piece. So, um, you'll, I'm sure people will see as we're going through it. Exactly. Right. What you're about right. To say. So, so I want to, I want to tell you what to look for because he's going to hammer on the super duper duper awesome effectiveness of the vaccine and how you are amazingly protected if you have the vaccine but also how you are at deadly risk of the unvaccinated and so he has to protect the vaccinated people from the unvaccinated people you have to pick a lane it can't be a and not a is it an effective vaccine which means they're not at risk from the unvaccinated, or is it a non-effective vaccine, in which case, why are you trying to shove it into people's arms? You have to pick a lane. So that's one of the biggest issues I authority. And it ultimately it's we're at a point where it's it's time to say no. It's time it, to defy. It's exactly right, because what he's saying is that we have a pandemic of unvaccinated people, but Yet, the people who the people getting vaccinated are the are are getting the disease, and so he's saying he said it, it, I, I think he's absolutely wrong about this. Actually, I think it's far less. But he said uh, far far more people that haven't gotten vaccinated. He says in the speech that eighty million Americans haven't gotten vaccinated. I think it's many more than that. I think it's more like fifty percent of Americans. But let's just take his number: eighty million Americans don't get vaccinated. Um, the, the rest, the other 250 million Americans are vaccinated. <laughs> Laughably, that's not the right number. But the other 250 million Americans are, are vaccinated, then they're fine. The only ones who are at risk are the people who are putting themselves at risk. But when they say, when they try to make the case that you're endangering others, it doesn't make any actual sense. Because if the vaccine worked, then I wouldn't be endangering them by not taking the vaccine as long as they've taken it. And if the vaccine doesn't work, then it doesn't matter if I take the vaccine because I'm still endangering them. None of this makes any sense when you break it down. But yet, don't listen, don't, don't reason through this, don't think about it. Just do what I said because it's for safety. Safety, safety, safety. Uh, give me your liberties. Yeah, and I'm sure you've seen the, the two pictures next to each other where there's the quote of those who had sacrificed liberty for safety deserve neither. Yeah. Next to Joe Biden from this speech saying, this isn't about liberty, this is about safety. Yeah. Exactly. That's the problem. Um, the government is not here to be my nanny. And especially when the government is vaccinating for last year's disease. Um, fact of the matter is, 
the vaccines, because of, of the type of vaccine it is, has proven to be, um, yeah, this is going to stay on YouTube anyway. The vaccines are not the miracle drug that <laughs> that they were proclaimed to be. Yeah. They, they are noticing that in vaccinated people, the amount of COVID particles in, for example, the nose are hundreds of percents higher than non-vaccinated people in vaccinated people because with this particular um vaccine it's targeting like a particular part of a spike protein and you know the rna all this sort of stuff it's not a normal vaccine it's not natural immunity and this is this is basically turning people into super spreaders <laughs> that's what's happening and the more that the 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 virus changes the less effective the vaccine is it's already dwindling and it was supposed to be 95 percent effective from preventing illness and even better at pre preventing serious disease it's still pretty good at, at the serious disease part but the transmission part has gone pretty much out the window for certain age groups so what we're seeing is we're vaccinating for last year's version and we're still trying to use the same vaccine when it's not last year's version anymore. So what we are, what it boils down to is we're going to have to have a new vaccine every few months. And you're going to have to take a new shot every few months because they're already talking about the Lambda variant and things like that. This isn't going to end. This isn't going to end. There is no chance that, that if you just get the shot now, this goes away. Remember, Biden said 100 days of masking when he got in office. How many days has he been in office now? More than And they're still trying to force you to max up, mask up. Have you caught on yet that their timelines mean absolutely diddly squat nothing? Because that's where we're at now. Yeah. It doesn't mean a word. If you believe a thing that they're saying, especially on, oh, just this next thing and we'll get back to whatever. If you still believe them, you have your your iq is in the single digits yeah they're really they're desperately trying to make people afraid again because people aren't really afraid that much anymore except for the the people i met the, last week and most people are just not afraid of it anymore it's gonna do what it's gonna do the vaccines don't work the the, the masks don't work none of this works it's just stuff that you want to make us do just to do something um you know, or or for more nefarious reasons, if you're a conspiracy theorist, I, I, it's hard not to be these days. Um, but um, but you know, people are not afraid anymore like they used to be, and I think this is a play to try to get people afraid again. I really just think that's what it is because if they can keep playing on this fear, they can ride this all the way through the next election, through the next whatever. I think they've got to keep the fear coming. Yes, and there's. I think they also need to deflect from people paying attention to what's been happening. Because notice all the different topics we're trying to pivot between right now. Um, so Afghanistan, Biden's a failed president with Afghanistan. The economy, Biden is a failed president with the economy. Unemployment rates, especially in blue states, super high economy's not doing well prices through the roof and oh we've created the most jobs since you know in you know 40 years because it's you took over when the pandemic was waning of course but you don't get to take credit for the disease waning for a while but he fails afghanistan and he's got to deflect on that very very bad for his ratings he's failed he said what did he say when he got into office or when he was when he was in the debates with trump i'm not going to shut down the economy i'm going to shut down the virus he clearly didn't shut down the virus because now we're getting surges again so now he has to do something else to deflect away from that now they're trying to to make the abortion law in texas the big headline because they feel like that's a better winner he was then he he's tried to give speeches about um what was it climate change because they have to find something that he doesn't look just awful on right now. They, they're, they're, he's a failed president everywhere you turn. Yeah, yeah. I think, I think their distraction is definitely part of the game. But I think, I, I really do think that controlling people. This, so, the, I think they get less, less benefit. You know besides distraction out of some of the other things. But when it comes to COVID, 
they're actually able to use this to control people's lives, to tell them, you know, what to do, to actually get them to stay home from work and uh, and actually force business closure, force people onto welfare checks, which of course is going to grow the, the federal government. Like all of these things uh, as it relates to COVID, even even doing mail, mail-in voting and all this stuff, all of these things from COVID, this is a gold mine. And I think they've, they've, they've figured out what a gold mine this is and are saying, we can't let this go. We've got to milk this, milk this. We've got to have diseases for the rest of our lives. For the foreseeable future, there has to be this disease thing that we can keep people afraid of. Um, but with that said, let's go on to, uh, let's, let's start breaking down some of the video. We'll do piece by piece. Justin's uh, going out, going in and out here with his internet. That's what happens when he's back at his old house. <laughs> but uh, I can hear you me, now. Let me say something real quick. Um, I was just going to say that when I say that there's a lot of distracting going on here, I'm not saying that to the exclusion of the power grab for sure. Power grab. Um, Yep. Uh, so we lost you again there, Justin. You said it's not to the exclusion of the power grab, and then we lost you. It's it's both. It's, it's both. It's yeah. they're 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 deflecting, and there's also a power grab for sure. <laughs> right. Okay. Let me let, let's let's break this down piece by piece. The different the different things that he says. Well, I think there's three or four different pieces here. Let's let's do one at a time, and we we'll probably do a part two on this tomorrow. For, so for, for those of you who are watching live or or um, on, on the premiere on YouTube, <clears throat> hang, hang tight. If you're watching after Tuesday, then no problem. Just go on and find the next video. It's already up. Here's, uh, here's the, first, the first statement he makes. This is a pandemic of the unvaccinated. And it's caused by the fact that despite America having unprecedented and successful vaccination program, despite the fact that for almost five months, Free vaccines have been available in 80,000 different locations. We still have nearly 80 million Americans who have failed to get the shot. And to make so he says that it's an unprecedentedly successful vaccine program. And uh, and did he say 80,000? Did he? Let me play that again. Hang on a second. I have nearly 80 million Americans 80 million. who have failed to get the shot. And to make matters worse, there are elected officials actively working to undermine the fight against COVID-19. So he, he says that it's incredibly successful. Justin, I think we've already kind of pointed out how that's not the case. Well, OK, so he did say that the vaccine rollout was successful. So I'm guessing what what the best faith interpretation I can give here is that the availability of the vaccine and the mass production of it and the mass purchase they made of the vaccine was highly successful. So you can go get it wherever and whenever you want. I think that's probably what he's saying rather than we did such a good job and all you guys still haven't gotten the vaccine. We've done a great job vaccinating everybody, but also not everybody's vaccinated. I don't think if I don't think I have to force a contradiction here, if you know what I'm saying, maybe, but I'm not positive. Right. So I'm, I'm looking up while you were talking where they're getting that 80 million number. Apparently that is there's 65 percent of adults in America have gotten the vaccine of adults and they're breaking down the last <clears throat> the last 35 percent as just the adults that are unvaccinated. The last 35 percent of adults is 80 million. That makes more sense because there's something like uh, is it 323 million people in America? 35% of that wouldn't be 80%, but 30, 35% of just the adults probably would be 80, uh, 80 million. So that I, I see where he's getting the number now, 80 million. It's deceptive for him to say 80 million people. <clears throat> uh, it's 80 million adults that, uh, that haven't gotten the vaccine. Right. And also, when we in the clip we just played, he says there's um, elected officials standing in the way of fighting COVID-19. Um, show me one. Show me show me one governor that's not been very pro vaccine. I mean, they like to jump all over Ron DeSantis. He's he got in trouble with 60 Minutes because of how he rolled out 
the prioritizing of the elderly in his COVID-19 vaccine plan. Like he was very much so pro-vaccine. I don't know of a governor that hasn't been extraordinarily pro-vaccine, Democrat or Republican. And you can have your opinion on the vaccine. But I'm saying if you're trying to say these governors, these Republican governors have been all in my way on the vaccine, that's simply not true because this is all about how many Americans have been vaccinated. Show me one governor who has been standing in the way of people getting vaccinated. You can't do it. It's yeah. just a lie. Yeah. It, it, I mean, it's, it's rhetoric because they support their people at what, what you know, whatever choice the, the people of their, of the, they support their right to choose for the people who there, who have their own bodies and should have therefore their own choice about what, uh, what medical procedures take place on their own bodies. Do you see where I'm going with this, by the way? Uh, because they support the right to choose for those for their citizens, they are hampering the vaccine efforts. Here's the thing. If the vaccine is successful, then people don't have to be forced to take it. Because if, if I don't take the vaccine and you do, and it's a successful vaccine, you don't need to worry about it. But if the vaccine isn't successful, then why should we take it? If, 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 if I have to take it in order for you to be safe, then how does me taking it make you safe? If you've already taken, it doesn't make you safe. It doesn't make, it's not going to make me safe. How's it going to make me, you know, in fact, actually, as you mentioned earlier, it actually causes it more of a safe. spread. And I'm wondering, yes. this is, this is the conspiracy theorist in me, but I'm wondering if that's not part of the plan. If they know that this spreads more, they may want to have more of this disease going around so they can continue the fear. And I'm not saying it is, it's just a possible, there's a possible um, motive here for, for well, all this. Well, the, the, the thing is, whatever it is, we're down to, is this incompetence or evil or both? Because that's, that's unfortunately the choice we're at now is it has to be one of those options. It's nothing positive. Yeah. Um, when, when that's how we're discussing your presidency, um, no good. There's at least a little bit of both. Uh, it just depends on what degree, uh, but there's at least a little I would, bit of evil. I would evil. tend to lean more towards evil on this one. Yeah, there's at least a little bit of evil and definitely some incompetence. And we're running out of time uh, for this segment, but we'll we'll um, if you're listening on KSTAR Conservative Radio Network, we'll be right back after the break uh, on FISM TV, on YouTube, on Red America Media. We will catch you tomorrow, and we'll continue the same topic, breaking down this video and walking through the things that he said. We're going to compare that. We're going to bring out some scripture. Uh, some things that we know of how the government ought to act, how the government ought to be um, treating its citizens based on scripture, how Christians ought to react to this. Is it, you know, is it, should Christians go ahead and take the vaccine? Is it the mark of the beast? That kind of stuff I think we've already talked about, but we'll bring it up again. And uh, so don't go anywhere. Join us right back here tomorrow here at Point of View, and we will see you next time.